from the studios of WMNH 95.3 FM in downtown Manchester, New Hampshire, you are tuned in to the best of Matt Connerton Unleashed. And on the couch, we have Conrad, how do you say your last name? Is it War? War, like in Second World War. Oh, War. Conrad War from uh, the band uh, Bees Deluxe. How are you? Welcome. Very well. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. We've been playing some of your uh, your stuff on the show. And uh, now, you're not from these parts originally, are you? <laughs> I, I consider myself from Brooklyn, but I'm actually from London. Okay. Now, why do you consider yourself from Brooklyn? Did you live there for a while? Well, or? if you're brought up in England, everything is easy. You know, people go to sleep in the middle of the day. They don't work. They don't do anything. They just crown people. Oh. (laughs) But then then when you move to America, suddenly you find you've actually got to work and meet people and find things and do jobs. And and so I moved to Brooklyn and New York, and I found it was a baptism of fire. Yeah. So immediately, it was like being in New York for six months was like six years in university in, in England. Wow. It's much, much harder. So are you so the lyrics to Hang Fire by the Rolling Stones, that's actually accurate <laughs> that's is pretty, what you're saying. Pretty fair, yes. I'll be damned. <laughs> <laughs> when did you uh so when did you come to the United States? So I was in New York in the early eighties. Okay. And I, I put an ad in the Village Voice and I got a drummer and a bass player and I auditioned for Hol- Hilly at the CBGB's on a Monday night. And he said, You guys are all right, come back tomorrow. And then after that, he says, you guys are all right. Come back on a Wednesday. So, And after six months, we worked our way up to playing on Saturday night, two sets in between the headlining band. Oh, wow. Yeah, we opened for Dogs of War, which was the name of Living Color in those days. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, fantastic band. Oh, wow. And HR from Bad Brains. Oh, wow. So we missed the early section with the Ramones and Talking Heads, but yeah. we got in the, like, the second wave when bands were still really interesting, yeah. but didn't quite go billboard. Okay. Oh, that wow! That must have been a great time to be there. It was awesome. Wow, that's yeah. that's amazing. One night we were playing with Jonathan Gregg and the Lonesome Debonairs, and I don't know if you remember CBS, but the stage was to the side of the walkthrough to the bathroom. So we are playing. Jonathan Gregg and his band are all at the bar drinking. They come back. All their guitars have gone out the back door. Oh my god! <laughs> you, oh, you, wow. had to, you had to nail things down or hold them in your hands. Yeah, yeah. Oh, jeez. Um, so you were there, uh, when did you say, so early eighties, early eighties. Okay. Then, um, my girl got a job in Boston. So I went, all right, I'll move up to Boston and then started all over again. Yeah. And then we had a couple of kids and I had to stay at home, make sure they didn't put forks in the electricity (laughs) Right. (laughs) and then started up again. So I put together bees deluxe here in Boston. Okay. Um, what, what was the, what was the, the band called when you were in New York? Uh, that band was called Invisible House. Oh, that's a cool name. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah. um, now, where does the name Bees Deluxe come from? What it, does that mean? It's a combination of a pub in London and an amplifier that I use to this day. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Oh, cool. Well, I had to come up with a name very, very fast because yeah. I was in a bar with a friend of mine called Maurice, and he said, you should play here. And I went, I don't have a band. He says, well, I'm going to book you. What's the name of the band? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we played the next Friday. Oh, there you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, I have a friend, uh, Mike Lachlan, who used to be in a band called simply called Something ah. because he was he was on the spot. He was yeah. uh, he 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 was supposed to play somewhere, and they didn't have a name for the band yet, and he just called it Something, and and actually stuck with it for a while. So um, so listeners should beware because I have a neighbor in Jamaica Plain who started a band, and he called it Hot Dog, and I went, "You're an idiot." If people go on Google and search for Hot Dog, they're never going to find you. Right. So you've got to do something that's yes. off center. Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. And 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 also too something that you can be reasonably sure that somebody doesn't already have. Right. Um yeah, so that makes sense. Um I mean, did you how how quick did you have to come up with that? Like did you do a search online to make sure there wasn't already a band somewhere called no, we, Deluxe, or did no, you? we were in the rehearsal studio yeah, yeah. on the phone booking it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's it. <laughs> that's great. That's great. That's very rock and roll. Yeah. Um, 
Cool. So, uh, what was um, what was it like, you know, starting in the music scene in Boston in contrast to New York? Was it was it drastically different in some ways? Or? The, the scenes are were and still are very different. Yeah. In New York, many of the clubs are four bands a night, backline provided. Bring 150 people, or we'll never book you again. Mm-hmm. And they they're like sausage factories. Yeah, they just churn you in and churn you out. Yeah, and some are better than others. Some have actual people who care about music. Boston, we tend to play gigs where we play for three hours. Okay, so we're playing in a room where the management and the bartenders like us. Yeah, they'll tell their friends, and the, once the customers have seen us once, they come back for the next one. Yeah, you know, so we play anywhere from dive bars, like Vincent's in Worcester. I mean, if there's 45 people in there, it's packed. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a great dive bar. And then we'll play Boston City Winery, Haymarket Lounge, where they're very Tony, you know, and mm-hmm. they serve meals. Yeah. And people <laughs> sit down. Yeah. <laughs> so th- there's a range. But we we like to play on our own. Mm-hmm. Because that's, that's why you want to play, is you want to play as much as possible. So you'll do a three-hour yeah. set. T- yeah. Take a break in the middle and run out for a cigarette or something, but... But if you're only playing for forty minutes, you barely got the plane off the ground. Right, right. You um, you've got obviously you've got a lot of originals, and and we've been playing some of them today. But you you also have quite a few covers, I would imagine, right? So our philosophy is to play covers that aren't played by everybody else. Yeah, and reverse engineer them so they're different. Okay. So we'll take a song like "Damn Your Eyes" by Etta James. And we'll play it in a different key, in a different tempo, in a different feel, mm-hmm. and then move, get rid of one chorus and put a break in there instead. Oh, okay. And then, and then stretch. Yeah. So a lot of what we do is improvisational. We don't really know where we're going to go until we've hit it. Yeah. Do you um, do you run into it where someone will, uh, has anyone ever come up to you and said, hey, I really like that song, a certain song, and they assumed it was one of yours, but it was actually a song that you that was a cover that you took and reverse engineered? Exactly that. We played for two hours at the House of Blues when it was at Harvard Square in Cambridge. Yeah. And the, the couple came up to me at the end and they said, you guys are really good. You should play some covers. <laughs> 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 yeah. And we've been playing ZZ Top, Jimi Hendrix, Edda James, Freddie King, Albert King, you know... Th- and they liked the tunes, yeah. and, but they didn't know that they'd heard them before. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, uh, subconsciously, they, they, uh, the, the, there's something in the, you know, in the backs of their minds that's going to connect with that because they have heard it before, but they don't know what it is right. because they don't re- recognize it. That's interesting. That's really cool. Um, our friend uh, DJ Steve is in the chat room. Uh, Rhonda Favero says, uh, Living Color, excellent band. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. You said, uh, what were they called, Dogs of War, before they were Living yeah, Color? Yeah, that was their sort of uh, hidden name. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. You know, like when the Stones played some Morgan's Cove, I don't know what they call themselves, but they played to 50 people there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you said you live in Jamaica Plain? Yeah. You ever play the Midway Cafe? Yes, as yeah. much as possible. Really, yeah? Yeah. And they've opened up. They've got the room next door as well. So now, oh. now there's a horseshoe bar, and you can get behind it and in front of it. Oh, okay. So they got double the space than when I used to play in a long, long time ago. Oh, okay. I used to do um, back when I did a lot of promoting. I I used to uh, do shows there uh, like for a while. It was like once a month at the Midway, but it was but they didn't have that other space then, right. so it was, it was small. It was cool. It was a lot of fun. I, yeah, it's it was, still going strong. It was a long time ago. It's probably not even the same same owners now. Um, but I think uh, it's Jay Bologna and Dave Quit. There were two brothers. Oh, I'll be damned. So Dave is still... I remember Dave. Jay is the serious one, and Dave was the nut job. He and I would go up on the roof and throw bottles at cars going past. Oh, my God. Yeah, Dave is the one I would deal with (laughs) there. I remember Dave. So he's still there. No, Dave Dave has vanished, but Jay is still there. Oh, Dave. Okay. So yeah, yeah, I don't think I ever dealt with Jay. I don't think I ever met Jay. I think it was all Dave. Dave is... What do you mean he's vanished? I I haven't seen him for a while. Oh, okay. But he's, he's not actually missing, is he? No, but I don't think he's working that room. Oh, okay, okay. I was afraid something had happened to no, him. No, no. Because I have good, I have good memories uh, with Dave, and it sounds like you have some good memories with him as well. Although, yeah, definitely. Although not necessarily <laughs> you know, the, the, the the best thing to be doing. But um, so so when did you when did you uh, end up in Boston? Uh, would, would that have been late eighties or? Yeah, late eighties, early nineties. Okay. I got what happened was I got a job. Because my, my then girlfriend got a job as a night science fellow at MIT. She was a science journalist. Okay. 
I got a job. I was in design. I got a job at Ryko Disc as production manager. So I went to Salem every day on Pickering Wharf, and I dealt with Frank Zappa and his wife Gail. Really? David Bowie, Yoko Ono, all the releases that we put on Ryko Disc. We, we repackaged artists who were fed up with their major labels. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm very familiar with Ryko Disc. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. That's cool. Yeah. How long, how long did you do that? Um, I'm guessing four or five years. Okay. Um, I sort of quit because I got fed up with the fact that they didn't A&R anything. Everything was recataloging. Yeah, yeah. And the, the final straw for me was that there was a band called Gallon Drunk. Gallon Drunk were Morrissey's boyfriend and his pals. And Sire Records convinced my boss that we should put out two albums by Gallon Drunk because they were going to tour opening for Morrissey. Oh. And we were going to sell 50,000 copies of each album. Yeah, yeah. And that Conrad had to put them out in five days. Meaning me. Yeah. So, I, 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 I mean, I didn't kill myself because I'm still alive today to tell the story. Yeah. But I put out these albums, and they were horrible. Oh, really? Really horrible. We killed ourselves doing it. So I went to the bus, and I go, I can't do this anymore. You know, it's like yeah. operating on a corpse. Yeah, I was going to say, I've, I've not even heard of Gallon Drunk. Right. Be, be thankful. Yeah. <laughs> Um, wow, that must have been a great experience. Though, it was. It was a job, lot yeah. of fun. Ro really fast moving, and a lot of great artists, and yeah, and and very nice to do things that were good for the industry. So, mm -hmm. for instance, we started Ban the Box. You're probably too young to remember this, but when they switched from vinyl to CD, everything came in 12 inch long boxes. Yes, I, I do remember that. Actually, complete yeah. waste of cardboard yep. and printing and money. And yep. So we started this movement called Ban the Box. Oh. And we got that kicked out. And then I was working with Philips DuPont Optical in Minneapolis. And together with them, I invented, first of all, I invented see-through jewel cases. Oh, and, no kidding. And really? then I invented the green dye that we put in Ryko Disc. Okay. So when you looked at the disc, you knew it was a Ryko Disc album because it was green. Okay. Lime green. Oh, wow. And as soon as we came out with the first releases like that, you know, everybody from the country was calling me, how did you do that? Where did you get that done? Yeah. You know, like Geffen Records were mad that they hadn't come up with it. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Did you, uh, did you, did you sell them the, the, the technology the recipe? or something? No, I told them to get lost. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you're just joining us, uh, we're talking with Conrad War uh, from the band uh, Bees Deluxe, but he's also uh, been pretty well steeped in the music industry in other ways, too. This is, this, this is a cool surprise, because yeah. I, I, I love talking about this stuff. So where did you go? So after you left Ryko Disc, where, where did you go then? Well, what happened immediately after that was the internet came out. Yeah. Ryko Disc went under, and they got picked up by Island, Palm Palm Records, okay. Island, and yeah. they drove it into the ground, and now it's moved to Rhino on the West Coast. Okay. And Rhino managed it as a back catalog. I don't think it's an active label. Mm. But I went, and I was designing books and magazines and CDs and posters, and the, the internet came out. And the editor gave me a little floppy disk, said, you'll like this, Conrad. It's something called Mosaic. And I put it into a computer, and I went, I can see the code. This is desktop publishing but from computer to computer. So then I stayed awake for two weeks learning how to, how to write code and how to write director and flash when it came out. Yeah. Oh, wow. So I was doing that during the day and then playing at night. Yeah. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Huh. Um, yeah. So you've, you've lived through all the, uh, all the changes um, in the, uh, and the, the one that's coming up now is AI. We're all going to live through that. Yeah. Well, any, uh, any predictions on that? Because I know uh, I know some people are are concerned that uh, musicians are uh, are going to go away. I'm not scared of that, but we are in a point. If you remember when cars were first invented, somebody had to walk in front of them with a red red flag. No. Um, yeah, when people first had cars, I didn't know that <laughs> you had to have like a servant walk. 30 feet in front of you with a red flag. Oh, so, wow. Watch out. There's a car coming. Oh, no. <laughs> I didn't and, know that. And wow. we're at that stage with AI because when I talk to AI like ChatGPT, I'll ask it some questions and I'll go, I'm sorry, my database stops two years ago. Yeah. Or I'm sorry, that's an invasion of privacy. I can't tell you that. Oh. Or I'm sorry, we don't know. So it's, it's early stages. 
my son was talking about this with me earlier, actually, and mm. he's in favor of a, a law to pass that if you're interacting with an AI, it has to be known to you that it's an AI. Yeah. So it, it is already doing good things. So, for instance, doctors who are too much overworked with paperwork, they can say, I've diagnosed my patient with X. And they'll write to the AI engine. They'll say, give me three different treatment plans for a patient with X who's 32 years old, a, you know, a white male. Mm -hmm. And the AI engine will come back with three reputable treatment plans and the doctor will be able to choose from that. And that saved them, yep. I don't know, two hours in books. Yeah, yeah. Because they can't remember all of that stuff. Right. But AI not only remembers it, but is learning it and teaching itself that. Okay. Are you concerned, though, about it going too far? Like, mm -hmm. I mean, people are like, uh, what my son was talking about is he's tried to interact with some of the AIs that people are talking about. I think there's one that's on TikTok, maybe, um, and that he found it concerning how they could take become one sided or another. Like he's he said he's he interacted with one that was uber, uber left liberal. Yeah. But then there was another one that was uber, uber right conservative and he's worried about ai in those worlds it's, it's just like the internet it'll give you back what you put into it so that now there's a new class of jobs called the job is called a prompt engineer that's somebody Ooh. who knows how to talk to ai okay it's a new job yeah really? a prompt engineer and the point of that is the ai itself doesn't care if you're a republican or democrat right it's going to answer the question pending how you ask it so you just have to be, it's like being scared of guns. Guns are dangerous, but it is possible to handle one without it going off. Yeah. And AI is dangerous, but it's possible to handle it without it going off. Yeah. There was this uh, story, I think it I think it might have been at Facebook or Meta, or whatever you call it now. Did you see this? Uh, the uh, We've talked about it on the show, these these two AI bots or computers, they, they were talking <laughs> to each other. <laughs> Did, do you know the story I'm talking about? I've heard of that, yeah. They, they were talking to each other, and they yeah. came up with their own language to communicate with each other, and right. they ended up getting disconnected because people were like, we don't know what they're saying yeah. to each other. They they seem to have the, their own language, and for all we know, they could be saying, you know, let's kill all the humans and, right. and take over. That, so That's just like my, what my parents used to say is, Go upstairs, find out what the kids are doing, and tell them to stop it. Right. <laughs> there you go. Uh, our friend uh, Mike Doyle is on the line. Hi, Mike. Hey, man. How you doing? Good. How are you? Very good. Thanks, Jenny. Nice to hear from you. Nice to nice hear from to hear you. you. And um, I apologize. I just turned you on, and I heard the discussion about AI, and I didn't catch the gentleman's name. Yeah, this is uh, Conrad War. He's from the band Bees Deluxe. Mm -hmm. And we've really been, okay. talk, been talking about music and the music industry and so forth, but we, we took a little bit of a side street because uh, AI, a big subject right now, is how is AI uh, already beginning to affect the music industry? What's your take on uh, it, Mike? Oh, okay. What do you think, Mike? Well, I, 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 yeah, I apologize about, because I thought you were simply discussing AI, and I understand now you have it you know, with music and everything. My only question was, I heard a great discussion about a week ago, and it was about the the many 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 positive things that can come out of AI, mm -hmm. like you were just like you were just mentioning about the doctor and the how many different you know remedies for what your ailment is, et cetera, et cetera, and hours it could save and all this. But then they went to the discussion about the negative part of it, mm -hmm. and then how horrible the negative part could be um, in in cloning people, making people guilty of crimes they didn't commit, um, you know, things like that. Um, and it was a really good discussion that, and the experts were saying that, yeah, there's a really, really dark side to it. And there's a really good upside, which is why everybody has a little bit of trepidation right now as to, sure, you know, we want the, we want the good, but how do we stop the bad? Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, and it's, it's a subject will be, uh, discussing for many years to come obviously as it continues to advance it, it seems like it's it's definitely here it, it's like the moment came you know we've been hearing about it for so long and now it's like oh it's it's here <laughs> we've got the chat yeah, when, gpt when I, and, and, and i know you don't like i don't believe you like musk but when a guy who when a guy who had his hand in the start of somewhat creating it um says hey we should we should pause here for a moment 
um, that worries me. You know what I mean? I, I say, holy cow, if he's worried. Sure. Um, oh, yeah. Then, There's a lot of people. A lot of people, people who are worried. Take note. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yep. It's something we want to proceed yeah. with caution with, certainly. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't know... I didn't know he had crossed into music with it. Yeah, I yeah. thought it was simply an AI. So discussion. here's an example, like, Mike. There was a, a record released on the streaming networks by two artists that was created by AI, and the two artists named in it had nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. And the record companies went ballistic because it download it got downloaded like half a million times in two weeks. Yeah, and they had to shut it down. But the point was, somebody using AI had made a song that sounded like these two guys. Yep. And it was a hit. Yep. These two hip hop artists. Yeah. 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 It's pretty amazing. So, so think of the think of the think of the lawsuits. Well yeah, the that, lawyers that always come, win. That will come out of it. <laughs> We'll all be dead and the lawyers will still be running around. Ain't that truth. <laughs> the, 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 the the AI lawyers uh, probably. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. yeah. We don't need. All right. Well, good talking to you guys. Right. Continue Take care, with Mike. your and Mary, uh, Jenny. If I don't see you, happy mother, happy Mother's Day. Oh, thank you so much. That was nice. Yeah, very, right. very nice. Talk All right. to you later. Thanks for the call, Mike. Talking with Conrad War from the band uh, Bees Deluxe, and um, yeah, so uh, yeah, we are we are in uncharted territory, and this is so. This is probably the next big, the next big transition in the music industry, right? Like first was the internet with Napster and everything, everything becoming digital, and and the effects that that had. Uh, on the music industry, just really ch just changing it uh, foundationally. This is this is the next big change potentially, right? Right, and it should be used creatively. So, for instance, Charlie Christian used to play guitar in an acoustic band, and he had the idea of sticking a gramophone needle into the body of his guitar, mm -hmm. like a hypo syringe. Yeah, and that made the music come out of the bell of his gramophone, and people were horrified. <laughs> And and then you know the wah pedal came out and uh -huh. people were horrified. Yep. Yeah. And then Pro Tools came out and all these musicians are going, "Oh, it's sick! I prefer analog. I want to be on two inch tape." Or right. the Beatles, Sergeant Pepper was done on an eight track. Why are you using Pro Tools? Because <laughs> you can because you can move a beat or change its pitch this yep. much. And AI is going to be exactly the same thing. People are going to be able to do things that we hadn't done before. Right. And I said years ago, wouldn't it be great to have, for instance another Led Zeppelin album, when they've all passed away. Well, mm -hmm. AI will help us do that. Interesting. And I'm not talking about Greta Van Fleet. I was, thinking, I was just thinking that. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. Don't we already have that? <laughs> well, and also you could get a movie. You could say, well, let's have Bill Murray with Marilyn Monroe in a movie. Right. Because it's possible now. Right, right. Yeah. So you sound, you sound uh, positive about it. I, I think that technology moves forward. We have to keep up with it. Right, yeah. My, my fear is that... Um, Government people and politicians don't know how to regulate this stuff because mm -hmm. they don't understand it. Right. If you remember when Mark Zuckerberg was in the uh, was in the Senate being at a committee oh, meeting, I talk about this on the show the, a lot. The yeah. senators were talking to him. They go, "How do you make money?" It's like <laughs> they they don't understand anything about this. Oh. Conrad, I've talked about that so many times on yeah. the show. How I I get I get so nervous when uh you know when government tries to interfere with technology or the internet or anything, and I and I use that as an example. Yeah, I tell people I say if you have confidence in these people to actually regulate this stuff, I I can I can uh, fix you. Uh, <laughs> just go to <laughs> go to YouTube and just look up. Either, uh, yeah, Mark Zuckerberg yeah. or or Jack Dorsey when he went and testified before a committee, and just listen to the questions that these people ask, yeah. and you begin to realize they're they're going to be voting on things that they have no idea what the hell even they're doing. Yeah, they same, don't know. Same is true of Frank Zappa when he went to Washington. Oh, uh, when for the PMRC thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. They they just don't get it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, that is so true. Well, we are. Uh, let's um, let's play something. We'll we'll uh, we've been playing some of your music. We'll take a break and we'll play. Uh, I'll let you pick the song. This is uh, the album Voice of Dog. Correct. This is the the current album that uh, that I have in front that, of me. That's an all originals album by Bees Deluxe. Yes. And I thought it was hilarious that we would start the album with a song called Song Number Nine. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it drives people mad. I go, that's the point. Did I, uh, what did I play at the, uh, beginning of the show? 
I think I played that one already. Uh, you were playing Flat Earth Conspiracy when I came in. When you came in, yeah. At the beginning of the show, though, at the top of the show, I played oh. something, too. And I think it was that. I think it was song number nine. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. What that, about... Uh, probably our biggest hit live is a song called Beer. Oh, Beer. All right. Let's... Uh, now, is this about... Uh, uh, is, is this about any... Any particular person, or is it just about beer? Uh, both. Okay. <laughs> and, it, and it only took three minutes to write. <laughs> oh, really? Who's, who's it about? Or, or, or can you, is it, is or can you I, say? Is it, is it a political person? No, it's a romantic person. Oh. oh. <laughs> All right. W would you rather leave it at that as far as the explanation? I, I think that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's give this a listen. So yeah. this is uh, this is a track called Beer, and this is from the band Bees Deluxe. We have Conrad War in studio with us. Uh, let's give this a spin, and then we'll, uh, we'll continue our discussion. Here we go. I want you, but I need a beer. I need you, but I want a beer It's cold outside, but I need a beer Bees Deluxe. What a cool song. Uh, Jenny is here at the news desk. I am. That and, was awesome. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And on the couch, we have Conrad War from uh, Bees Deluxe. And uh, yeah, that's that's a great song. Um, it, now, that's you on vocals, right? And guitar, yeah. And, and guitar. Yeah. Very good, very good. Now, who else is in the band? Carol Band plays keyboards, vo sings vocals, and plays harmonica. Okay. Paul Giovanni is the drummer, and Jim Gilday is the bass player, and he sings as well. Oh, okay. So it's a four piece with three vocals. Gotcha, gotcha. So you, you take turns on the lead vocals. Yeah, it's, live, mo or? it's mostly me because I'm. Oh, okay. Because I'm a whack job. <laughs> <laughs> and we tour from Maine. We go to Rockland, Maine, and go down to Miami and Florida. We go up and down the East Coast. Okay. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was looking at your uh, your tour dates online actually um, at uh, beesdeluxe.com dot com is the site, yep. right? Um, yeah, I like the website. Who does the website? Did you do that? Yeah. Did you build that? Yeah. I'm kind of a website nerd, so I, cool. <laughs> I, I noticed, uh, I, I, yeah, I like the design. I like the layout. And, um, and you also brought Jenny and I a couple of, uh, let's see. So there's, um, so you're, you're still putting things out on CD. 
Yeah. Obviously. Uh, so you brought us uh, this um, single uh, Nitro, uh, and it's got uh, Industrial Espionage, the instrumental version. I should let me put. If the, you put the camera on me, I've got them right up in front <laughs> of my computer. Let's do. Oh, perfect. Yeah. There's there you cameras. Go. Nobody told me oh, that. Oh yeah, you're oh, on. Yeah, you're yeah, even yeah. on cable. Oh yeah. <laughs> cool. Oh, Mike Doyle. Yeah, is, you're uh, everywhere. Mike yeah. is uh, calling us back. Hey, Mike. <laughs> Hey, sorry, sorry. You know I hate to call more than once, but uh, I just, I had to say I had it on the station. I hadn't changed, and I was sitting at the light listening to that song. And let me tell you, that was awesome. The, the instrumentals in that song are off the charts, man. They, the, the I don't want them to get too big of a head. The singing was good, but uh, the instrumentals were off the charts. No, right there with you. Yeah. Underst- understood. Yeah, the vocal was, charts. Oh, oh, oh no. <laughs> That was excellent. That's all I wanted to say. Thanks. Good job. It was excellent. Thanks, Mike. See you. All right. Thanks, Mike. All right. Very good. Yeah. Uh, I, I was going to ask him if he uh, if it made him want to have a beer, but uh, it sounded like he was in a hurry. But uh, yeah, no, that great, great song. Yeah. So now the, the artwork on these is is really cool. Actually, let me put the camera back on uh, where on Jenny is, so pe- on me. people watching online can see the artwork. They want to see my gorgeous self. Who does Who does this? Uh, <laughs> the artwork on these is really well, cool. Well, we, I think they're awesome. We do the graphics, but we commission the art from people that we like. So, for instance, Nitro. The Green Man, the, he's actually called Anxious Man, is by this wonderful artist named Wendy Brusick, B-R-U-S-I-C-K. Okay. So she found us playing in Cambridge and became a fan, and we looked up her artwork, and we begged her to do that. So she's done the artwork for our mm. next album, which is still being mixed. Okay. Uh, and the other one called Wherever You Hide is an EP, and that's a photograph by my daughter, Zoe. Nice. Oh wow! Zoe took that photograph in a sculpture uh, park somewhere. That is very cool. I like it. Isn't that nice? Yeah, that is. Yeah, yeah. and we'll uh, uh, for people listening who obviously can't see, we'll we'll take pictures of these and put them up on social media so you can see exactly what we're. Uh, we'll do that after the show so you can see what we're talking about. But yeah, that's uh, that's very cool. Very cool. Um, now, are you are you putting out? Um, are you doing anything on vinyl? I notice uh, vinyl has, uh, well, it never went away, but now I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think 2022 might have been the first year where vinyl actually outsold CDs. I read that too. I'm not not sure I believe it. Really? Yeah. Uh, well, one reason I don't believe it is because there's a vinyl shortage of oh, the raw materials. I didn't know that. So obviously there's a lobbyist or, or there's, a, there's a PR engine going behind it, probably to build it up again. Yeah. So the cost per entry for vinyl is hard because you've got to make a master, a master that you, that yeah. you cut, you know. So, yeah, yeah. Whereas a CD, you can make 50. Right, right. And a cassette, you can make 10. Yeah. And an A-track, you can't make. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cassettes, I was um, I was shocked when, geez, it must have been seven or eight years ago now, maybe not that long, I was on Bandcamp.com mm-hmm. and I realized that, that – People were starting to put out cassettes again. Hmm. I couldn't believe it. I mean, you know, obviously just kind of as a novelty, I guess. Right. But I don't know. Maybe some people like the sound of tape hiss. Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> or they've got cassette players in their cars. Yeah. yeah. Or they, you're sitting or there with a Walkmans. pencil on the tape, just yeah. swinging it around, yeah. trying to get it to wind back up again. I don't miss tapes. No. But I think I want a CD player now. Yeah. Like, I really think I want to have a CD player again. Yeah. I know I have one. We actually have one here. I think Rob Azevedo is the only one who uses it for his show. But, um, and my, you know, I have a MacBook that has a CD uh, player on it. But, um, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I was amazed to see that cassettes had, had sort of come back. And, um, I, I actually, you know, I used to work for a retail chain. I, I worked for Strawberries. And then, of course, it got bought by uh, Transworld and became FYE. But I remember, um, because that's you know one of the things that's interesting, and I'm, you you might agree with me. It's it's, it's um, interesting to see over time what technologies go away and what technologies stick around, and to try to predict it. And sometimes sometimes you know people aren't always right. And cassettes are an example of where I thought those were going to go away at least five years sooner than they did. And we still had them when I was working at that job. We we had them much longer than I thought than I thought we would have. But my theory at the time was that um, uh, it was because of the auto industry, because people still had cassette players in their cars, right. even though CDs had been the dominant medium for so long. And then eventually uh, cassettes went away, but cassettes uh, stayed, stayed around a lot longer than I would have imagined. But um, Well, it's immensely portable, but the two that you missed that went away 
like the dinosaurs were the mini disc, mm -hmm. Sony, oh, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah. Which had a bubble memory so you could jog and it wouldn't skip. Oh, okay. And you yep. could record on it so you could record, you know, speeches at college and go to sleep in them. Yeah. And then Philips came out with another one called Digital Compact Cassette, which was essentially oh. a cassette sized DAT. Oh. And that went down the toilet really fast because they tried to um, gouge back more of the royalties from the artists. This is Philips. Really? In Germany. Okay. So, And the artist said, no, you can't have it. If you're going to take that much away from me, we're not going to put our albums out on digital compact cassette. But the idea was to have huh. a cassette that had CD quality sound on it. Okay. Um was that, did that ever uh, make it to the United States? I had to make those damn things at Riker Disc. No kidding. Yeah. See, because so, I don't even remember those. I remember the mini discs. I yeah. don't remember, but I don't remember those. Digital compact cassette. That, wow. That, that burnt in flames really fast. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. I mean, I remember the old DAT recorders. Yeah. Those were great. Because yeah. I, I remember you could bring those to a concert and, and record. And the quality would be amazing. You right. Know, but, just... but indexing on that stuff or, you know, it, oh, was, I, yeah. it was just it was for engineers, not people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah. And the other technology, too, that went away quickly, from what I can recall, is because we actually had these. When I first started at Strawberries, we had these. But it was it was at the tail end was uh, laser discs. Oh, yeah. You know, so you got this this movie basically on. <laughs> and they you know, were twelve this, inches. Yeah, right. yeah, they were huge. Sure. And it was like, and it was cumbersome. And then, uh, you know, of course, as soon as CDs, I mean, as soon as uh, DVDs rather started coming out, laser discs went away pretty quickly. Right. But I remember people would come in wanting to order them, and it would take forever to get them. Y you know, and uh, do you have little libraries on the street here in Manchester? I don't know if any of them. There, there, there may be one in Manchester, but they do have them around. So they're all over in Jamaica Plain, and when I open them up, they're full of DVDs. Oh, yeah, you're talking about oh. the... Um, the little boxes the, on the street where you... People set them up on the street, and you put yeah. books in. You put a book you in, take, take a book out. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in my neighborhood, people are getting rid of their DVDs. Because, no of, the, because of the streaming industry, because of Netflix yeah. and, and Apple and everything yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. Oh, that's another thing that's been in the news lately too, because of the the writer strike and you know the, the, these uh, writers, uh, you know, streaming has really changed uh, technology. It just changes right. everything. Streaming has really changed uh, uh, the way a lot of them get paid and so forth. Yeah, get ready to be flooded with reality shows. Yeah, no kidding. Huh? <laughs> that's what happens. <laughs> Take your clothes off, run out in the street. That's what happens. Get a series. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, now, Bees Deluxe, how long is the... Because I assume the lineup has changed over the years, right? Because Occasionally, we'd lose and find a player. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how long has the band existed? I mean, it's been decades, right? I, assume? I, I think we've... I think we put out something about eight years ago. The demolition tapes. Okay. You know. Um... So, but is is the current lineup? Has it been together for a while? Is it pretty stable? Or yeah, this one three or four years, and we've we've done thousands of miles together. Yeah. So yeah. we we take turns driving. Okay. And the the mythology of this is that when I'm driving, it rains. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And when anybody else drives, it's fine. Right. Right. You you all pile into a van. Or, yeah. yeah. We, we 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 borrow either borrow a VW bus or a Ford Transit or rent a Ford Transit. Yeah. But COVID. Almost killed us on that. Yeah. Because if you remember, before COVID, you could rent a van for, I don't know, 150, 200 bucks a day. Sure. Do unlimited miles. So we'd be cool. Yeah, yeah. And then all the, when COVID hit, people like Enterprise said, okay, let's sell our inventory. Yep. And we'll buy it back when it's finished. Of course, when it finished, they couldn't buy the inventory back. Yep. So now they're charging us 400 bucks a day for a Ford Transit. Oh, wow. So we're going to have to do this on roller skates. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh that's one of the things that I hear the most now from from anybody who does any any level of touring. It's so well they, actually in fact there's been national artists who have said no, we're we're not going to we're not going to tour anymore. It it it's gotten uh to Steve be... Steve Vai says he won't play in Europe anymore. Really? Yeah. It, it costs him too much money. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, the travel is uh The travel, the trucking, the hotels, all the overhead is now higher than the ticket. Yeah. And it always used to be that the ticket price didn't get you your money back. Mm -hmm. Like when the Stones or the Talking Heads played in New York, they would break even or lose on ticket sales because mm -hmm. Ron Delsner would take it from them. But they would come back into the black on T-shirt sales. We're a champ. And, and I think like 
the Rolling Rolling Stones played, they would make twenty five to fifty bucks a head on merchandise. Okay. Because people would go in and they'd buy the two hundred dollar leather jacket. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and that's where they made their money back. So yeah, which is kind of unusual because you think rock and roll is in the t shirt business. Oh, very much so, yeah. But, but they pretty much are, and that's how indie bands survive now. Yeah, yeah. If you look at something like Bad Bad Hat, they when they go up and down the country, they're selling T-shirts to pay for gas and pizza. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, no doubt. Well, my uh, my all-time favorite band is Kiss, and of course, Kiss happens to be the most heavily merchandised <laughs> band in history, you know? Um, I don't, I'm not even sure. I think the Beatles might be number two, but, but Kiss is the most heavily merchandised, and it's like, uh, you know, they... They actually um, sold off their publishing back before before a lot of artists were doing it back in the, uh, geez, I think it must have been around 1990, 1991, because... Oh, they cashed out? On the, on the publishing, yeah. Right. Um, and, uh, but, you know, they make, you know, touring, they sell so much merch, you know, yeah. it, it's like, uh, that's where the money really is for so them. So I, I have the worst example for you. Yeah. I used to be friends with a band called the Soft Boys. Okay. which was Robin Hitchcock and a great guitar player named Kimberly Rue. And the band split up. Robin wanted to go solo. And Kimberly started a band doing Bo Diddley songs. Huh. They were in Greece. They got a deal. They cut a song called Walking on Sunshine, uh, Katrina and the Waves. Yeah. That's, that's Bo Diddley. And Kimberly Rue is playing. Oh, no kidding. So he's in England. I'm still slightly in touch with him. I walk into a store and I find a toothbrush that when you press it, plays Walking on Sunshine. <laughs> I'm going, if that isn't the lowest wow. version of merchandising a rock and roll band in the universe, I don't know what. Yeah. Yeah, that song, though, kind of transcends. It's a great song. You know, to be honest with you, I never liked it. <laughs> I remember, but I think part of it was, you know, when I was a kid, you know, I couldn't turn on MTV without seeing the video. And right. I was like, oh, enough. Yeah, well, the overexposure would kill you on anything. Yeah, yeah. Um, because that was their only hit, right? Katrina and the Waves, I think, right? I don't remember another uh, that, that's it. Yeah. I don't remember another song. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But he was great in the Soft Boys. He played like Hendrix. Yeah. Know? Oh wow. Listen to the the really early stuff. So like I wanna destroy you. <laughs> now with um when you were at Ryko Disc, were, were, was there any merchandising going on there or or or, or because they were No, but what what we did, and I think most labels do this, is we would package in a way that the super collectors would want. Okay. So we had a release called Yik to Dosa, which is by Zappa, and it's called, it stands for You Can't Do That on Stage Anymore. Okay. So they'd be like five double albums in a box, hand painted. Yeah. So if you bought all five, you got the box. So that's kind of merchandising, but it's really upselling. Yeah, to yeah. persuade people, don't just buy volumes one through two. Oh. Buy volumes one through five, and you get this extra thing. That makes sense. You yeah. know, uh, my favorite actually was Nut Odkins, uh Flake by the Small Faces, which came in a circular tin, like a tobacco tin. Yeah, way before Public Image, because Public Image did it metal tin box as well. Okay. So, huh. so it was really about that kind of packaging. One one spoof that I came up with was we did an album with NRBQ called Honest Dollar. Yeah. I got $1,000 from the bank, and I sent it to the band, and I said, I want you to sign every single dollar bill, and then send them back to me, and I'm going to put them into CDs. Oh, wow. And then shuffle them and distribute them. Yeah. So if you're an NRBQ fan and you bought one of those, you might open it up and find a dollar bill in there signed by the band. Oh, wow. Oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, Oh wow! Is that uh, is that kind of the the most unique idea that you would? Cause who would think of that? I mean, that's that's. I assume that was your idea, right? You're the yeah. one who came up with that. Is that is that the most unique idea that you had come up with? Uh? I had I had another one that it didn't quite take off in the way I hoped, but um, I introduced Bob Mould to my boss, mm -hmm. and he, Bob really hated Virgin Records because they had nothing but session players working for him. Oh, and the session players are. You've probably met session players, but sure. they're very serious and they're in there to make a dollar and get out again. Yeah, yeah. So he's a good songwriter and a great guitar player, and he just didn't like that. He wanted to be in charge. Yeah. So he agreed to sign with Ryko Discus, an original artist, and he formed a band called Sugar. Okay. And the first album he did was Copper Blue, 
which is to take on police. Yeah. So I got with Philips DuPont Optical and we made a copper CD case. Oh, okay. And printed the name of the band on the copper on the outside. Oh, wow. So, And that's like a super limited edition. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Wow. Do you... um it, now, do you do... A, are you involved in the in the industry side of things now, or, or are you just focused on the music? I just play the guitar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you miss it? No. No? No. As I said, you know, the more you get embedded in the record industry, the more you feel like you need a shower. Really? Yeah. And and I, I suppose it's like that in the film industry and in the advertising sure. agency and sure. publishing. Yeah. Interesting. Um, what, so, I mean, was there a specific thing that... <laughs> I'm, I'm so curious. I, I mean, was there something specific that made you feel that way or was it just kind of over time? It, um, I got two albums. I had cast my net and people knew who I was and they would send me demos. Yeah. I got a tape from Robbie Krieger, and my boss wouldn't put it out. Really? Yeah. It was just it was an instrumental album by by Robbie Krieger of the Doors. If you don't recognize, him. oh yeah, yeah. But it it was a great album, and they wouldn't do it. They said we can't sell that. I go, we can sell that. They went no. And then I got another tape from a guy whose name I can't quite remember yet, but he was he was a student of Bill Frizzell's in San Francisco, and he was playing world music really early, before world music really existed. Yeah. And I took it to my boss, who's a very nice guy named Don Rose, and he had a desk the size of yours, this deep in CDs and DAT tapes and cassettes. <laughs> so because I worked there, I could get it to the front of the pile. Yeah. And he listened to it, and he came down the next day, and he said, Conrad, this is, this is awesome. This is the best I've ever heard of this genre. And I said, great, let's put it out. He said, no, nobody's heard of him. Huh. So my heart kind of broke. Because I go, okay, so here's a record industry executive who has the power yep. to introduce a new act, to put out original music, and chooses not to. Yeah. And I'm guessing it's like that everywhere. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. And there's, um, yeah, and, I, you know, there's so many horror stories, too, about, uh, you know, like bands they sign with, uh, or solo artists or whomever, they sign with a label, and um, you know, and they 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 sign whatever, however many album deal, or whatever, and then they record something. And hell, maybe it's even happened to you. I don't know. And they record an album, and then the label decides not to put it out, and they shelve it for whatever reason. Yep. And then the band is like, and they don't even ha own the master recordings of what they just did. Yeah. And this label says, no, we're we're going to shelve this for for which could be for any number of reasons. Yeah, I've I've got tracks in warehouses in London at EMI and places. No kidding. The, the one that comes to mind, though, is there's a really good guitar player in New York called Binky Phillips. He was in a band called The Planets. They headlined Seabees. Okay. They were huge. And he cut an album. They were one of the first biracial bands, too. They had a, had a black guy in the band and three white guys yeah. in the early rock days in the 80s. Yeah. And the album was phenomenal. And it went to the label. And Ted Templeton said, We've got Van Halen. We don't need the planets. And it was just like if he if he just got the tapes there six months earlier. Yeah. And that that just blew him up. Wow. And why wouldn't you and, and and yeah, you've got Van Halen, but so what? Why don't you want another you know what I mean? Why don't you want another? Well, because record companies right can't market the same thing twice in one month. Mm. Um in the book publishing industry, it's called review driven. A book company like Doubleday will have 20 books out a month. Yeah. They'll promote one of them. Okay. So why do they put the other 19 out? They go, just in case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they say, those books are going to be what's called review-driven. Okay. But they're not going to push it. Okay. So it's up to the author to go out and find a publicist and get on Good Morning America. Uh, but in the record business, it's really specific. It's like, we can do one girl singer, one boy band, one heavy rock band, one reggae band. That's it for the next two months. Okay. I remember okay. watching an interview with Tori Amos talking about that. She, the difficulties. Well, we already have a female. Right. Uh, we've already got a piano player. <laughs> you know, and yeah. they just they wouldn't put her on. It's insane. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, wild. Yeah, and is. from the artist's perspective, it's it's bad luck or good luck depending on your timing. Yeah. Right. Seriously. I mean, when you you remember, if you listen to Nora Jones now, you go, it's good. Her 
album came out when there was nothing like it. Right. The true. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So the critics went, "This is wonderful." Right. It was like a dose of fresh air. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, and and I remember that too because I was I was working for Strawberries when Nora when Nora Jones uh, hit big. And yeah, you're right. I, I remember that. Of course, and of course, now we you know we live in a time where you can you know you can put things out yourself on the uh, release it yourself online. And right. It's a it's a completely different world now. I mean, record labels still exist, obviously, yep. but um, uh, yeah. It, but it, it's funny too. You know, pe- uh, people there's still people who think that you know if I if I get signed to a record label. You know, all my problems will be solved, they, and I'll they be instantly famous. Them. And yeah. yeah, I remember meeting a band that had been signed in Utah, and they came up to New York. They got a cheap apartment in Staten Island for ten bucks a night, and they're all working as waiters in bar bucks. Yeah, and yeah. Bar- <laughs> I go, you signed to a major label? He says, "Yeah, we got no money." Right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it is. A, it, it can be a, a dirty business, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I can I can see why you got disillusioned with it. <laughs> Um, listen, uh, oh, this has been uh, wonderful, uh, Conrad. We, we learned a lot, and uh, we went in some directions I wasn't expecting, which is always a nice surprise. Um, you know, I love talking about the music, but other aspects of the music industry, too, is great. Um, but uh, we do want to make sure people know uh, where to find you online, your your band, uh, uh, Bees Deluxe, and if you have any shows coming up in the area that you want to, you know, we have listeners online from all over, but uh, any any specific shows you want us to know about, anything at all, social media, whatever. You can, you can find us on Facebook. Facebook is Bees Deluxe, and you can find our website, BeesDeluxe.com. And our next show is a no-cover show matinee at the Porch Southern, uh, the Southern, what's it called? Porch Southern Fair and Juke Joint in Medford. Okay. And it's a matinee. Okay. And we released a video of Jamie Lee Curtis begging us to put out a matinee show. Really? <laughs> yeah. Nice. Oh, no kidding. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Cool. And yeah, we're on that, Instagram and Twitter and Mastodon and all those things. <laughs> so she was at she was at like the the Grammys or something like that, and she was begging Bruce Springsteen to stay on matinee. Because oh. she goes to bed at seven in the evening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we cribbed the video and put our name in there. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's brilliant. I love it. I love it. All right, very good. And the website, of course, is beesdeluxe.com. And uh, uh, Conrad, this has been wonderful. Thank you again so much, my friend, for coming in. This has Thank been you, great. Jen and Matt. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. From the studios of WMNH 95.3 FM in downtown Manchester, New Hampshire, you are tuned in to the best of Matt Connerton Unleashed. And uh, we have a very special guest with us. Let me bring that mic up. So uh, Zach from uh, Abner the Second is here. Hello, sir. Hi. How are you now? Good, good, good. And uh, he's going to play live for us. And let me bring up the um, the other. Uh, we're kind of going to live sound check on the air here. How's that sound? A little more amp. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right, so uh, uh, he's going to play live for us. Uh, going to do some songs, and then afterward, we'll uh, we'll chat a little bit and get to know him. But this is really cool. Uh, this is uh, a very. Let me put the wide shot on there so you can see the full setup. He's got his pedals and his uh, viola. Am I saying that correctly? Yep. Viola. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. So this is uh, this is awesome. So I will uh, I will go ahead and give you the floor if you want to. You can introduce the songs or however you want to do it, and uh, I, I I just can't wait to hear you. Very cool. This song's called. Uh over. You don't think that it's getting easier, but if anything we would say it's getting better. And I wrote a song about you And learn the age-old lesson Think of it, sing in tune
And we hope the coast is good for you. And just know I still think of you. And how I want to thank you for teaching me the age old lesson. Think of it. Singing the mic and singing tune oh. If you're just joining us, Zach from Abner the Second is here with us in studio, and uh, he's got a whole he's got a whole setup here. We'll we'll talk to him about it afterward. Very interested to learn more and uh, how he uh, <laughs> we figured how he figured out how to do all this. It's uh, it's remarkable. It's like six but, different pedals. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Seven maybe. Yeah. It's very kind of you saying. Thank you again for having me. Absolutely. I was very, uh, very happy. You know, I listen to your show every now and again. It was oh, very nice well, of you to uh, very nice of you to uh, oh, have me here. Totally Thank you. Like to have you here. Yeah. Very cool. Alrighty. So. These uh, next two songs, uh, they go back to back. Um, they're called uh, Fireplace and uh, Keep Closed. And they're actually the opening two songs off of the album that I have coming out uh, called The Audrey It Burns, which is out uh, May 15th. Uh, and if you go to uh, Instagram.com slash Abner underscore II, there's a uh, pre site link there. So make sure you do that. Anyway, all right, here's a couple more. <laughs> Less of how you're living. I 
by a pie's brick and marooned And when it's raining, you're reading And I'm just outside for you, I guess
Beautiful, beautiful. Gorgeous. <sighs> you know, I always enjoyed rainy days. Really? I was yeah. thinking about that, you know, as I was playing. I was like, this is just fitting. <laughs> <laughs> rainy days make me drowsy. <laughs> Really? Yeah. yeah. Rainy you know. days and Mondays always get me down. Yeah, I, yeah. Like, I like this. I like the sunshine. <laughs> if you're just joining us, we have Zach from Abner the Second here in studio, and uh, this is uh, this is great. Really enjoying this a lot. You have such an incredible setup. He has uh, for 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 our listeners out there is this beautiful viola, electric viola, plugged into about six different pedals into an amp. And I'm just fascinated watching you, him work these pedals and, and different switches and dials. And it's just amazing what you're able to produce all by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like there's a lot more going on. and It's just one person. It's absolutely awesome. Just well, awesome. That's well, very kind of you to say. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you again for having me. Yeah, yeah. All righty. So I have, a, uh, I have a few more tunes. Okay. Yeah. My instrument, they stopped developing it in the like 1300s. <laughs> so it doesn't respond well to anything, <laughs> such as a room or someone breathing. So yeah. <laughs> we're doing all the things. A lot of tuning. <laughs> yep. <laughs> all right. This is the uh, title track off of uh, my album, The Audrey It Burns. The song is called The Audrey It Burns. All right. You're older now, and you know that this just probably won't end well. The idea of losing it in the concept, you're gonna quit again. It's a forest of nicotine, a haunted house of amphetamines, and the idea you're quote alone, you're alone. You're alone And on your own You could tell me shut my poor mouth when I'm talking to somebody other than me alone We go to bed most nights angry Or at least another version of something other than I be You're alone Alone But I guess you know this so well, oh well In the idea of losing sleep, in the concept you want to leave We don't have it And if we did we'd break it again We don't have it And if we did, we'd break it again You long for a place that you don't know In a time that doesn't exist With thoughts that you won't grow When you were less alone The Audrey, it burns The Audrey, it burns The Audrey, it burns off oh. The Audrey a bird
Very cool. That's the uh, so that's also the title of the album that's coming out. The Audrey yeah, the Audrey it burns. Yeah, coming out May fifteenth. Oh, recorded cool. here in Manchester. Excellent. Very nice. Excellent. Where, where where'd you record it? Uh, I recorded it at uh, Blastula Studios uh, in uh, Manchester, New Hampshire. Okay. Uh, yep. Which was uh, which is very nice. Yeah, my uh, friend Evan Yarmo did it. Oh, very yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, the the studio tracks we've been playing sound great. Yeah. Thank you so much. Really good. Yeah. It's very kind of you to say. Thank you for playing them. Absolutely. We have a we have a name in the uh, chat room I haven't seen before. I wonder if it's a fan of yours, Larry Thomas. Larry Thomas, not familiar. No, not All familiar. Right. But I'm really terrible with names. <laughs> well, hello, Larry. And faces. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Larry. <sighs> All right. If you're just joining us, we have Zach from Abner the Second here in studio. Alrighty, so speaking of Yarmo, this uh, next song is actually called Yarmo. Excellent. Did I forget to tell you we're a wreck? You'll see every night before sleep. Just speak. Just speak to me Just speak to me Please No shame in locking doors Blocking numbers and not Wanting more I can face through And live your golden years without you Face through something other than happy, something other than happy, something other than happy, something other than happy. Something other than
Wow. It's beautiful. That was awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm just fascinated. (laughs) Getting to watch you play is just amazing. I'm just fascinated watching you strum the viola. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, wow. Are you using a pick? No, just This is the the way you were holding your fingers. It almost looked like they were like a pick. Yeah, yeah. No, just just the old uh, the old finger. Huh. Uh, I have very small hands, oh. but that doesn't reflect my masculinity. Right. It's, it's good to <laughs> good to clarify that. Yes, yes. <laughs> I have a strong masculinity. <laughs> I thought that was feet size. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Was, yeah. Yeah, that was taken. Very cool. Alrighty, so I have a couple more tunes. These two go back to back as well. Okay. Yeah. So these are the uh, last two songs off the album. Uh, it's called a. Uh, Alley and uh, set in. All right. This is uh, Abner the second with us in studio. Where I 
talk to myself Mr. Green, would you ask these fine folks To leave There you go again Acting like the top of men You know you're not Nothing sets in Just give it time And you'll be back on your knees again And they'll love it Acting like the top of men You know you're not Nothing sets in Just give it time And you'll be back on your knees Again And they'll love it Thank you. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's, wow. Yeah. That's pretty, yeah. pretty intense. Last two songs off the album. Yeah. Okay. You know, yeah. Going out. Yeah. Try to go out with a bang. You know. Those are two <laughs> of the those are two of the earlier songs I wrote, you know. And I'm not sure if either of you are news buffs or not, but Oh yes. <laughs> everybody the past couple of years spent a lot of time inside. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yes. yeah. that was that was uh you know that was some kind of plaguey thing. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't oh, know. that was amazing. Yeah. No, um, but yeah, that was those are uh, those were the last two songs of the album, but they were like the first two I wrote 
you know, a while ago and then yeah. went in that direction. So Oh, fantastic. Yeah, well, what you just binged. Well, Did, just a curiosity question. What you just said, was it during the pandemic that you learned to do this or was this something you were already doing prior to it? Um, so I play um, I play strings uh, in a band called uh, Happy Just to See You. That's like my like main project that like I really spend a lot of time on and, and you know, uh, creatively where I try to spend a lot of time with, you know, cello, violin, viola. And then um, what ended up happening was his my front man got hit by a car. Oh, oh, and he was just kind of laid up in bed for a year. So then I was kind of left to my own devices. And that's when I started to kind of do this. And, you know, and then it just kind of spiraled off into me, you know, doing this. And then I bring what I do here into Happy Just to See You. And yeah, so that's, that's how awesome. I started to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, oh, that's amazing. Zach, did, did you want to get, uh, did you want to sit, have a seat and get comfortable? <laughs> yeah, very cool. We'll, yeah. We'll, 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 better than we'll, have my back to you. <laughs> well, we'll uh, that's okay. Yeah. We'll, uh, we, we'll talk for a few minutes. We we're actually, um, yeah, we got about 10 minutes left in the show, but I, I do, uh, uh, like I said, you know, very interested in what you're doing. It's such a unique project and yeah, you can just go ahead and here, I'll mute the mic while you, while you adjust Absolutely. it. Yeah, Absolutely. And for people that are interested, you, you can definitely find Abner the second on Instagram. That is A B N E R underscore i i and i am dropping those links into the chat room excellent excellent yeah where does the name come from abner the second um it's a uh homage to uh uh, uh there's a cartoon called hey arnold oh yeah and he had a pig named abner and oh, i thought okay. having a pet pig was really cool <laughs> yeah so then i was just going to be abner and then i thought ah, you know abner the second you know yeah pet pig yeah you know? <laughs> yeah so so tell me a little bit about it i mean to learn to do to do this the way you're doing it is it um and i've seen other artists do looping and stuff but i mean it looks to somebody like me like I'm a simple bass player. I, I, I you know, I used to play bass <laughs> no, man, and rock You bring bands. the rock. Well, That's what you bring. You well, bring the you. rock. I yeah. appreciate yeah. that. But I mean, uh, so to me, to me, what you're doing looks incredibly overwhelming. <laughs> oh yeah, it's um, it's uh, it it was baby steps, you know, to to kind of sort of learn to do everything. Yeah, you know, it was um, it, it for 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 the album that I just did. Like everything, I, I tried to make it so I kept like the organic relationship with the instrument. Yeah. And then bring kind of parts I wrote, you know, at home or laying in bed or whatever it is into in front of technology and stuff along those lines. So yeah. it was all about kind of piecing it together. Yeah. 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 So baby steps though. Yeah. One looper at a time. Yeah. Um, and, uh, when you, when you play out live, are you, um, uh, do you, well, do you do a lot of shows or are you playing out a lot? Or? Yeah. I try to play out as much as I can. Um, yeah, I've, I've had a handful of shows. Most of them have been like basement venues. Yeah. So, you know, their locations are, shh. but yeah, you know, <laughs> right, so, right. <laughs> yeah, no, but the, um, yeah, it's, uh, I, I try to play out, you know, as much as I can. Um, and like ever since COVID my, uh, you know, for lack of better words, like little black book of like promoters and stuff to reach mm -hmm. out to has kind of dried up. Everybody kind of changed into sure. something else. So I'm trying to figure out who to contact for shows and stuff. And um, the album came out later than I wanted to. So I didn't really have a whole lot to send to promoters. Gotcha. But but I do I do enjoy playing out live. Yeah, know? yeah. And I do this and I, I have a, a keys player. Uh, and a drummer and stuff along those lines that I use. As oh, well. cool! Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's cool that you have the option to do it by yourself if you have to. You know. Yeah. That, that's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. It's very nice. Yeah. Yeah. What? What? Uh, what? What band do you play in? Oh, I, no, I don't play in any bands oh, anymore. Oh, I used anymore. to. I, I used, used to? to be in a million different bands. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. No. Bass is cool though. Yeah. 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 Bass is awesome. <laughs> yeah, um, a good time. And the album is out the 15th, you said? Yeah, May 15th. Yeah. Yeah, May 15th. Yeah, it's going to be out. Very excited. You know, put a lot of work into it, you know. Yeah, in yeah. The scheme of things. Now, which is, it, very nice. is it just you on the album or do you have other musicians? No, nope, I, I have I have multiple other musicians. Or, yeah, I have um, Evan Benoit. He did some guitar and vocals for me. He's also in, ha in the band Happy Just to See You. Okay. Uh, and then Evan Yarmo, he was my, you know, quasi writing partner is the best way to describe it. You know, okay. with all the extra the bells and the synths and all the extra instrumentation, a lot of it went to him. Yeah. Uh, and then I had my friend Ty, uh, who's in a band five feet. He did drums for me okay. at um, Black Lodge Audio. I think that's what they call it. Yeah, Black Lodge Audio. Okay. Out in, uh, Candia. You okay. Know, where we recorded drums with a man named Andrew Johnson. So, yeah. Now, is Happy Just to See You still active as well? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Happy Just to See You. Yeah, yeah, we're still kicking. Cool. Yeah, they're both, yeah, both are... It's uh, apples and oranges. I hold both very close, you know, near and dear to my heart. So, yeah. And we have an album coming out, too, you know. Uh, we have yeah. a we have a call. I think uh, somebody has a might have a question or 
some feedback for you. Hello, welcome to the show. Who's this? Hey, Maddie, it's Gary. Hey, Gary, we're almost out of time, so we got to be Are quick. Are you sending my love? <laughs> hey, sweetie. What's up, Gary? Hey, um, the music that you were playing, your your uh, Abner two. Um, do you you play like uh, Ashley McIsaac? Actual actual McIsaac. Do you know who Ashley McIsaac is? Oh Ash- no, no, I have no idea. Who is she? He was. Um, is he he, um, he plays uh, he plays violin. And he plays really um, what people would call odd things, like what you do. Oh, but nice. He's very good. And yeah. I've known him when when I was younger, and um, his stuff is really good. Very cool. And just like Jean, uh, Jacques Lupante, uh, he's another violinist. And um, they were playing, you know, they would play rock music and they play things like that. But Ashley McIsaac is very good. Yeah, did he do uh, his, live- um His his aunt is um, she's um, she another she's a um, a uh, violinist um, who plays all over the place. And uh, but. She, um, Ashley McIsaac is really he's amazing. Awesome. Yeah, I'll have to uh I'll have to check yeah, him out. He's, you know. he's a Canadian. Oh, oh so very just cool. look him up. He's real his stuff is really, really good. He had one song. Uh, I have a couple of his CDs and it's um uh, Good Day, How Are You or whatever is one of the songs. And mm. um he's been playing since he was a young kid. He's probably old now, but um yeah, the, the the stuff that you're playing is just like what he plays. Nice. Or what he played. Very cool. cool. And it's amazing. Yeah, it's it's just really great stuff, you know. And All right, Gary. I love I love the diversity in, in music like that, and I love what people can do with um with the sound. Yeah, yeah. Of you know, people will say, "Oh, why well, you pay? You play fiddle?" It's like, no, I don't play fiddle. <laughs> I'm not a country. You know, I'm not a country <laughs> fiddler. Yeah. But, all right, you know I'm playing. I'm playing Gary. like a like a classical rock uh, type, which you're playing, and it's it's excellent. I enjoyed it. Cool, cool. All right, uh, Gary, we are short on time, but, my friend, yeah. but I appreciate the call. I know you're running out of time, Maddie. Yep. yep. So, all right, Gary. But uh, I love you both, and right. uh, I just want to tell you I'm celebrating a um, an anniversary uh, one month in my new uh, palatial apartment. Oh. Here, so congratulations nice <laughs> congratulations but yeah i've been listening and the, and the music's fantastic Very and cool. uh just yeah keep it up i love it all right uh, all right yeah check out ash and nick guys you okay. really enjoy his stuff so all right thanks right on, man all thanks right. gary well Thank you. love you guys have right, a great night all right. bye-bye all right bye-bye yeah. all right very good um before we run out of time zach uh where should people go online to keep up with everything that you're doing as far as shows and the new album and everything? oh yeah definitely yeah so instagram right now is kind of the uh, main vein i don't really have much on uh facebook uh so okay. that's just uh abner a b n e r underscore i i and i think jen put it in the chat yes yep yeah and if you uh follow me there there's a pre-save link uh right now the only link i have is for spotify for it's a uh, there's a little bit of a delayed fuse with uh putting up tunes in the world of you know pre-save stuff so hopefully i'll more pre-save links later but yeah may 15th it'll be out okay very excited excellent excellent how many uh songs on it uh there's nine songs okay three got cut <laughs> yeah. oh really so, yeah. yeah three got cut yeah oh. yeah so nine songs you know yeah which is nice why why did you cut the three um they just weren't coming together because yeah. when it came down to recording this it was it was very labor intensive just recording each individual loop and then yeah. trying to make stuff work and just three couldn't come together you know gotcha. and i don't like yeah. long songs either you yeah know, yeah I, personally i don't and some like i cut one that was five minutes like yeah I'm not, oh no kidding i'm yeah. not a five minute guy yeah, you know? yeah. i don't like five minute guys <laughs> you know, I'm not, yeah. so yeah i can't do five minute five minute long songs there you go there you go yeah. well we're really glad you came in today this is thank awesome. you so much yeah means the world thank and, you for and, thank you for having me yeah no what what you do is remarkable and uh and unique and it's uh you know, it, it's uh, no disrespect to any any of the great artists that we have on, obviously, but it's cool to see somebody doing something as interesting as what you're doing. And that's very you know. kind of you to say. Yeah, yeah, and, th- yeah. and thank you. I, I showed up and just kind of plopped, having to di everything right onto <laughs> no, you, and no, you took it like a champ. So thank you oh, for that. Oh, thank cool. you. You were awesome. Yeah, thank no. you. Awesome. Thank happy to you. happy to do it. Yeah. Very good. Very thank good. You. Well, we are just about out of time. Uh, Jenny, did you want to plug your uh, your website? And, uh, Absolutely. You can always check me out at jencoffee.com. J e n n c o f f e y dot com. Mm-hmm. And I do have more writings coming out on the mighting, and I will be giving an update on the national 
health campaign. Very good. Very good. And uh, that's going to do it uh, for us for now. Uh, Zach from uh, Abner the Second. Thank you again yeah. so much, my yes. friend. This thank has you, been, Matt. Thank you, Jen. This yeah, has been uh, the world. absolutely, absolutely happy to do it. And uh, that's going to do it for us for now. Uh, I will talk at you all a little bit later. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. From the studios of WMNH 95.3 FM in downtown Manchester, New Hampshire, you are tuned in to the best of Matt Connerton Unleashed. And we have with us, uh, returning to the program, Mr. Shane Ballin is here. Hello, hello. It's great to be back. Yeah. So excited to be back. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, absolutely. It's good to see you and uh, looking forward to hearing some tunes. And uh... Yeah, me too. Me too. I got a... <clears throat>
We got a couple guitars here. I got a little Martin here we just got. Mm, sounds so nice. So we got some, uh, I got a couple covers I want to uh, play, and but I want to play some songs off the uh, EP that I just uh, put out. Oh, yeah. And uh, my good friend and producer, Mr. Good Bars, Timothy Thorpe, Toy Box Studios in Nashua, um, did a great job <clears throat> helping me out uh, with that and uh, look forward to working with him again. Yeah, so. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, um, and is the uh, so the EP is it out now? Yeah, I it takes a few days. It takes like a week or how many days it is, but it's all set up with uh, on uh, DistroKid. Excellent. Yeah, so it's out there on all the platforms. Oh, very yeah. good, very good. Yeah, I don't know. I guess it'll be a, a little while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, congratulations on that. <clears throat> Thanks. And I just keep writing. You know, I have a bunch of songs, so <laughs> I have another uh, another whole whole uh, EP. I would say right now. So excellent. I just gotta just gotta work on it. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, whenever you're ready, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm dying to hear uh, whatever you're going to play for us. Yeah. I wanted to play a couple of the songs. Uh, I was thinking about playing, um, you know, Charlie, and I want to play Daddy's Truck. I want to play um, String Pain Projection. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I have a new song that called A Note that I, that I just wrote. Okay. Um, so maybe I can get that in. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> we have plenty of time. All right, great. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I'd like to start it off here. Let's get warmed up with a little Stapleton. Huh? All right. Sounds good. My share of broken halo Folded wings that used to fly They are gone Wherever they go Broken halos that used to fly Angels come down Share of broken halo, folded wings that used to fly. They fall gone wherever they go. Broken halos that used to fly. Broken halos that used to shine. Why we're not meant to know the answer, they belong to the by and by, they belong to the by and by. I've seen my share of broken halo. Broken halos that used to fly Little oh. Stapleton. Ah, it's beautiful, beautiful. I love it. By the way... Oh, I was going to say, by the way, uh, Sarah Lorraine Prince is in the Facebook live chat and says, excited to hear you perform the song you wrote with my mom. All right. That's right. I think I remember you. Uh, at, oh, and uh, Iris Iveson Lemire is in the chat room and says, cool, Shane Ballin. All right, let's do Daddy's Truck right now. All right. This, this is the song that uh, Sarah was talking about? Yeah. Cool, cool. All right, awesome. All right. 
And, uh, yeah, here we go. This song is, uh, I wrote with a friend of mine, passed away, Janine McGrath. And, uh, she wrote this song and I said, spoke about it once and it reminded her of her dad when I started playing a certain chord progression. Mm. And, uh, she wrote a song about an old Dodge truck and, uh, that had the smells, you know, and reminiscence of her father. Um, so she would keep it around and then, uh, she had to go to the junkyard one day and this is the story of daddy's truck. I can still smell tobacco when I climb inside my daddy's truck. Three on the tree on daddy's knee. He taught me how to travel down an old dirt road. Luckiest strikes in the home spice are two smells that hit my heart. Now that I'm old Memories in his old Dodge truck are worth more than the money that you're paying me If I wasn't so down on my luck right now I'd keep that truck in I'd hang on to my daddy Unruly child and running wild he didn't know how to tame me Daddy's girl, I was his world And all his love that he gave me I didn't care, I just wanted to grow up And be free Memories in that old Dodge truck Are worth more than the money that you ever gonna pay me if I wasn't so down on my luck right now, I'd keep that truck in mind. I'd hang on to my daddy. Yeah, yeah. As I take that gun rack down now, my heart breaks With every painful turn of the screw That rear view window now has a very clear and painful view Please fix her up, don't junk her Don't turn my daddy into a metal cube Memories in his old dad struck her worth more than the money that you ever gonna pay me With more than the money that you ever are gonna pay me. Mm, wow, that's that's uh, yeah, you, you played that last time too, and just amazing. Um, thank you. Our friend uh, Rhonda Favero uh, from uh, California in the chat room says, uh, having just lost my beautiful husband, this song is so resonating with me. Thank you. Wow, yeah, you're welcome. I'm glad it helped. Yeah, yeah. And sorry to hear that, Rhonda. Wow. Yeah, sorry. Absolutely. But, uh, sometimes <clears throat> music can bring out the uh, pain and make you, you know, reminisce, but in a in a way that heals you in a sense. Yeah, so. yeah, absolutely. And uh, Sarah said, thank you, Shane. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, yeah. Thanks to Janine. And um, Yardbird Blue Sky says, uh, hashtag Shane Ballin, we say awesome song. Um <laughs> Very nice, very nice. Um, 
And uh, oh, and I see uh, another name in there too. Iver, uh, Iris Iverson Lemire, who I assume is uh, that's my mom. Oh, that's your mom. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, <laughs> very nice. Very nice. That's good. All right. Well, you want to keep going? Um. Yeah. Cool. Cool. I'm not gonna do that one though. I was gonna say that sounds familiar. What Passenger. Is oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would like to do another cover. Uh, cover though. Uh, this is goes out to my dad. And uh, um, down in uh, Florida. Oh. Yeah. So uh, this song right here is uh, by Luke Combs. It's called Even Though I'm Leaving. Mm. How you doing, Dad? Love you. Daddy, I'm afraid Won't you stay a little while Keep me safe Cause there's monsters right outside Daddy, please don't go I don't want to be alone Cause the second that you're gone They're gonna know and before he left, he grabbed my hand and said Even though I'm leaving, it don't mean it I won't be right by your side When you need me and you can't save me In the middle of the night Just close your eyes and say a prayer It's okay, I know you're scared when I'm not here but I'll always be right there Even though I'm leaving I ain't going nowhere Bob Ballon, Mike Ballon, toughest guy I know Dad, we're gonna be late Uncle Sam don't like to wait Got a big old plane gonna take me far away. I know I act tough. There's a churning in my gut. Cause I just can't call you up when things get rough. And my daddy turned and he grabbed my neck and said, even though you're leaving, you don't mean it I won't be right by your side When you need me and you can't see me In the middle of the night Just close your eyes and say a prayer It's okay, boy, I know you're scared when I'm not here But I'll always be right there Even though I'm leaving I'm afraid Won't you stay a little while Never thought I'd see the day I'd had to say goodbye Daddy, please don't go I can't do this on my own There's no way that I can walk this road alone And my daddy turned and he grabbed my hand one last time and said, even though I'm leaving, it don't mean that I won't be right by your side When you need, you can't see me in the middle of the night Just close your eyes, say a prayer It's okay, I know you're scared, I'm right here and I'll always be right here Even though I'm leaving I ain't going nowhere Ah, oh, it's beautiful. It's really beautiful. Thanks.